Well, I'm sitting here in Sedona, Arizona, in what has to be the most beautiful campsite I've ever found. And I'm thinking to myself, maybe you guys want to see my rig. I've never done a tour, and maybe today's the day, so let's get to it. All right, I've been trying to make this video for about an hour. I'm, it's a very busy day in the park today. Lots of uh, tour groups driving around, and planes flying around and so I'm just gonna make this thing you guys are gonna have to take it as is because I just can't get a break on the all the traffic this is a 2016 Toyota 4Runner and I've done a couple of modifications to the outside because um, I'm sure you guys know these vehicles come really well equipped for off-roading um, this is a trail edition so it's got the crawl control features. It's got the nice uh, rims, not the TRD rims, but it's got aluminum rims that are made for off-roading. So I just put some BF Goodrich KO2s on there in the stock size because going up to uh, 285s, uh, you have to do some modifications and everything. And I don't know if it's worth that extra inch of tire in order to get, you know, to deal with all the hassles. So. I'm sticking with the 265s for now, and we'll see if, uh, if I have any issues. Um, I did put a three and a half inch old man emu lift on here, and I did all the modifications to the front end so that I could get my alignment to uh, hold. And then I put in a guard under here. Uh, to, you know, to deal with uh, any brush hitting under there. And then I have an ARB diff breather that goes back to the rear differential so I don't have to worry about flooding um, the differential if I go underwater. Um, on the back of the Forerunner, I have these two mounts. These are for supplemental gas tanks. Rotopacks. And they just fit on like that, and then they there's a thing that you screw on with a lock so I can actually lock those tanks on there because the tanks themselves are a little bit expensive and yes I did drill four holes in my forerunner and I put a piece of rubber gasket behind this and on the inside there's another plate another metal plate like this with a rubber gasket and there's bolts on the back with Loctite so these things are extremely secure and I can carry two gallons in here and two gallons there so on a forerunner that gives me uh, more than uh, i think around 70 miles of extra gas so if i am out and about in the back country driving in the middle of nowhere i know that i can at least get out to the major highway um, so that's part of my recovery system is being able to carry you know that uh extra gas when I need it. And when I don't need it, I just tuck these in uh, under my bed, empty of course, and all aired out so there's no gas whatsoever in them. You'll notice that the back windows are tinted. That's limo tinting. I did that so that um, I wouldn't have to fuss with any kind of curtains or, you know, uh, that bubble wrap stuff that people put in the windows. You don't want to be futzing with stuff as you're, you know, preparing to go to bed every night. Um, you can see that there's nothing on the roof, or there appears to be nothing on the roof. I sleep inside the rig, so I don't need the big off roady rack thing happening up there. So what I do have up on the roof is 200 watts of solar panels. And they fit with incredible tolerance. It's amazing. And they fit right in the roof line of the car. So you'd have to be 6'2 or something to see them. And it just adds to the stealthiness of the vehicle. The reason I've left the vehicle so plain on the outside is because not only is this an outstanding overland vehicle, right? 
it's also a great vehicle for going into the middle of cities and towns and neighborhoods and just parking and being invisible. Nobody expects there to be a full apartment in the back of this thing. So let's get to the uh, front door. My God, there's nothing in it. I thought this guy said he lives in here full time. There's literally nothing in this vehicle. That's crazy. Where are all the shelves? Where are the things on the side and all the gear and the stuff? Well, I have everything you need. Let's zoom in here. I've got an electric refrigerator over there. I've got my Jackery battery. I've got my Wii Boost and flashlights. I've got what I call an interior roof rack. This is made out of 8020 extruded aluminum and it screws right into the original holes that the hook were, uh, was in. You know, the, the, there were screws in the back here and that's where that hooks in. And then up front, it screws in where the handles used to be. And what's great about this roof rack is it gives me a place to put, well, first of all, nothing is touching the fabric in the roof. So if I ever sell this thing someday, I can take this roof rack out and nothing has damaged the, the roof in any way. It also allows me to do things like put the fans up, you know, in a secure way. Um, and they don't even move when I'm driving. I also have a, an old iPad up here that I use as a TV. And you can see that I have USB outlets that I just put in the wall and I run down underneath to a, a, a powered hub and that just plugs into the Jackery. So all this stuff is running off of solar. This also gives me a place to put my fairy lights and to put a bunch of other little holders. So I use a lot of these little grips for things like if I want to, uh, you know, shoot me prepping dinner, I can attach something to this ball right here and I can, it can hold my phone and I can do stuff. The other thing is that I can hang laundry here on these clips. And these are little rubber feet with grippy teeth on them. And, um, you know, the forerunner, forerunner window can go down. So I just open up the two front windows, open up this window, the air rushes through, and anything I want to uh, dry laundry-wise, it just uh, dries in a few minutes. It's wonderful. Uh, I'm a minimalist when it comes to the clothing. Uh, I figure I only need basically two outfits, um, the one I'm wearing and then the one that is waiting for me to wear you know, or the one that I'm washing, right? And so, uh, instead of building stuff out, I figured that I could use these little mesh cubbies that attach to the wall with automotive Velcro. And the great thing about automotive Velcro is it can withstand really high temperatures and really low temperatures, and it doesn't pull off the wall. So I have only a few socks, only a few underwear, and only a couple of t-shirts. And then I have maybe some shorts down here. And I have the pants that I'm wearing and the long sleeve shirt that I'm wearing. And somewhere in here, I've got a down coat. And you'll notice there's one, two, three pillows. These two pillows have down um, camping comforters. And so as the this, this is a rumple blanket. And so as the weather goes down, you know, below 40, I just pull out a down, cover me. If it goes even further, I pull out another one, cover me. And, uh, and I'm good to go, no problem. Uh, because I don't have the big drawer system down here, I was able to lower the mattress right to the floor. This is a an eight inch spring mattress with a two inch foam topper. And it's a full length, it's a full twin. It goes straight to the back, 74 inches. I'm 5'8", my feet don't even touch this, you know, the, the lift gate when I'm uh, sleeping. It's just amazing. And then I realized that I didn't need, you know, a 38 inch wide mattress. I could actually go to 30 and uh, that opened up this whole space right here where I could put a couple of cubbies for stuff. 
So I just have one bowl that I use for eating everything out of. And I've got my, you know, laundry soap and my cleanup soap. And instead of uh, toilet paper, I use a bidet. See, you fill this thing with water and you just squirt yourself clean. It's amazing, you guys. Definitely everybody should try this. Pooping out in the woods or out here in a ditch. Forget the toilet paper. You just do that. And then I use um, these quick drying minimal towels. Um, this is a longer one I'll take to the gym. And this one I use for pretty much everything else. And then if I need to dry it, I just hang it up there. I'm good to go. I've got a trauma kit here, not a medical kit. I mean, not a first aid kit, even though it says first aid. It's actually a trauma kit. Look into your, into your, uh, the kit that you keep for your um, medical stuff. You don't want just a first aid kit. That's good for scratches and boo-boos. You want a trauma kit so you can isolate a limb or something and that'll get you off the trail to safety. Um, I've got a brush here for cleaning this back area because this is the perfect height to sit on. And then I have other little things here um, that are accessible, you know, easy to get to or they're held on by Velcro. Um, I just got these hooks at a Home Depot and they're great for hanging your fruit, right? So when I'm done with this, um, I'll put this over there and I'll fill it with apples and then I'll have my oranges over here going and um, I found these flashlights online they're fantastic uh, everything in my car is powered by electricity I have no extra fuel or propane for cooking or anything like that I'll show you that in a second but what's great about this thing is that it gets really bright and you can move this in a million different ways, right? And it's magnetic on the bottom. And so I can take it and put it right here if I'm changing a tire, light this whole area up, right? Or if I'm arriving at a camp late at night, I can put it up here. I can light up the whole side of the vehicle and I can do it on the other side and on the front or whatever I want. And, uh, and then when I'm done, I just tuck it away and it looks like a normal, boring forerunner on the outside. Now, these flashlights are inexpensive. You get them at Walmart. So I put them everywhere. I've got them here. And I got them in the front door. So I have six of these flashlights. Right? I mean, what do you do with the space in the Forerunner? I don't know. These flashlights fit right in there. Uh, I have a refrigerator. Right? And now you might think, oh, that's kind of small, you know. But what I do with my food is I get frozen food that's already cut up. Right? Frozen vegetables. And I just portion them out into meal-sized containers. And then I do the same thing with my frozen berries, right? Because when berries, when they thaw, there's a ton of liquid in them. And then the liquid gets out all over your, uh, your uh, cooler and it makes a hideous mess. So I keep some nice sauces in here, right? And I just take one of my meals there and I put it in. This guy. This is an electric cooker that truckers use to slow cook their food. So that's glass, and the interior is glass, and it's sitting on top of a heating mat. Right? This whole thing gets up to 170 degrees. You can put anything you want in here, any kind of meat. You can easily put like um, TV dinners, right? Amy's dinners fit in here. 
perfectly. And in about an hour and a half, it'll cook your meal. So what truckers do is an hour and a half before dinner, while they're out driving and doing stuff, they hook this up, cooks your dinner, no fuss, no muss. It's great. I can plug this into the Jackery, or in a Forerunner, there's a 110 outlet back here. Right? So I can, when I'm driving somewhere, I can just zip this all up, leave it out here, do my off-roading and crazy stuff, and it doesn't leak or anything, and you're good to go. It's wonderful. Okay. Um, this is a cutting board from a company called um, Epicurean. And I just put it right here, and I pull the mattress out about a foot so it lines up with the bumper. And then I can just stand there and cut and do whatever else I want without getting my mattress uh, all dirty. So this is kind of what my kitchen looks like when it's all up and running. Um, I just take my raw vegetables, and I put them in here with the tomato sauce or some other sauce. And um, I just eat them raw. They're delicious. You could warm it up if you want. Um, I've been practicing eating stuff that's just uh, raw and natural. I mean, why not? You know, I think we're used to eating things all warmed up, but there are a lot of things you can eat um, just simply the way they are. And uh, this is another one. So I love the Amy soups. Um, and uh, you can get them low salt, which I really like. Um, you know, this is lentils. I like to get about a cup or a cup and a half of beans in me every day. Um, because I'm a, I eat vegan when I'm out, and so it's nice to have the roughage. Uh, and this is how I handle my trash. So I don't, I don't have a lot of trash in my vehicle. Um, when I buy stuff at the supermarket, I open everything up, I put everything in my Ziploc bags, and then I throw away all the, the trash bags and everything else. So I'm not carrying trash with me, um, uh, you know, almost ever. And, uh, I will get rid of whatever extra trash I have at the periodic stops that I make. Um, but this is how I handle the cans. So um, I love Amy's because all of their lids have a built-in can opener. So I don't have to go looking for my can opener. It's just right there. And then when I'm done eating at it, and I'll eat right out of this. Um, I like eating these things at room temperature or, you know, you can leave them on the dash of your car in the sun and they'll warm up. Um, but I, I don't mind them at room temperature. And when I'm done, I just put the lid back in and I put this on and then I throw it back in here. And I can leave that there for a week. And when I finally get to a, a gas station or I see a trash receptacle somewhere, I just go and get rid of all my cans. I keep this little plastic lid and I just throw out the can. I'm good to go. And then this is how I, I warm up liquids. Um, it just plugs right into uh, the back of the Forerunner. So I can turn the car on, turn on the outlet, run it for five minutes. This will bring this much water to a boil in five minutes. And then my coffee is Little Via Coffees from um, Starbucks. They have uh, four or five flavors you know, of coffee. And then they have... Um, iced tea, they have lattes, they have a whole bunch of stuff. This is so convenient. So no grinding, no pour over, no nothing, right? This is the coffee. So warm water, that, and I'm done. Easy, easy. And then, uh, I didn't show you this last time, but this is for blowing up my tires. This is just a uh, an electric, hooks up to the battery of the car while the car is running. And then, um, it blows up my tires in, I think, about five minutes per tire. So it's small, compact, it sits right there. And these things are made out of felt, so things are not rattling around when I'm driving off-road. And you're probably wondering what this is. What do you think it is? It's colored this way for a certain reason. That's my pee bottle. So I don't have to get out of my rig at night. So the food is pretty easy. One of the great things about traveling, you know, solo like this is that you can set up your sleeping arrangement so that everything is just where you would want it. So when I'm lying in here, 
I can reach up and touch these fans, right? What's cool about these fans is they swivel in a million different positions and they use um, USB connections, right? So I just plug them into the wall over there and they're always plugged in charging along with the iPad, always charging. And the little fairy lights run off the battery as well. So everything in the back is not running off the car battery. It's just running off of the, uh, the Jackery that I have. And that's just a Jackery 500. It runs everything. Got a portable toilet seat, right? I'm 57 years old and I want to be squatting. It doesn't really work for me and I'm kind of heavy. So I have a nice toilet and I can just put one of these biodegradable bags in there right that's actually an eight gallon bag which is kind of crazy i'm getting some newer ones that are smaller i can just do my business in the bag and i can just twirl it all up put it in a ziploc and throw it out the next time i'm you know near a landfill or something um got a i wear glasses so at night when i'm lying down i'm ready to go to bed i have a non-scratch um, place to put my glasses at night something to clean my glasses with. And then if it's bright, like I'm parking in a Walmart parking lot or my favorite place, which uh, when I'm in a city is to park right in a uh, hotel parking lot, um, I have my eye shades, right? Because when you're, you're looking out, you can see right out the windows, see? It's amazing. And then for cross ventilation, I built these screens into the windows. So I just went to uh, Home Depot and I got this half inch by gosh I don't even know eighth inch you know rod and I just I manually bent it to the shape of the window and it's basically held in with uh, you know these kind of magnets these long magnets which I spray painted black and and um, and even though it's not perfect I haven't had a single bug get in the car now this has a screen on it, and all I did was, you know, use, um, what is that glue, whatever the glue is that comes out of the little gun, you know, to do that. And then I have these little wind shades on here so I can lower the window to here. It doesn't even look like the window's open. And I have that on either side of the vehicle. And um, I can have the air flowing across. And the fans, are right here right so they're pulling the air in on both sides or one's pulling in and one's exhausting it's really great some of the things i oh let me get my key out so i've got my flashlight here but here's one of the greatest things again what do you do with this little teeny shelf area in the forerunner this is the coolest thing it's one of those little it's a micro you know all-in-one gadget thingy it's called the dime i forget the company that makes it but you can look it up it's a heavy duty thing it's the real mccoy it's just miniature and it's got pliers and screwdrivers and uh, tweezers and um, all sorts of little you know, scissors and and um, everything you'd want. You'd be amazed how often, I, I use this almost every single day. And all I did was put a little Velcro on it, a little Velcro in here, and it just stays there, even when I'm off-roading. It's wonderful. I keep my toothbrush up here because inspired by the ultralighters who break up all of their activities into things that they do while they're walking, I figured, hey, while I'm driving, I can brush my teeth, right? But what do you do with the toothpaste? I mean, that's, that's a pain in the neck, right? What do you do with all the toothpaste? Well, there's a company that makes these chewable toothpaste bits. Look at that, a bite. And it's kind of like a mint, but you just chew it up in your mouth and you brush your teeth and then you can swallow it, no problem. And then in here, in the glove compartment, I put an organizer and I've wrapped a lot of things in towels. So I've got my extra glasses, right? 
I've got the window cleaning sprays that work with uh, the tinting because you can't use just any kind of window spray on your tinting. Extra masks, and I've got an electric razor. So I can just pull the razor out while I'm driving and shave. And another thing I have here is a, uh, you know, your paint, right? For touching up your car when you get dings. And believe me, when you're driving, all the time you're getting dings constantly so I can just you know touch that up make sure I don't get any rust or anything like that and then I try to keep most things black in here so when you look in the vehicle it doesn't look like there's much going on right when I'm in a city and you look in the vehicle it doesn't look like there's much going on and this is so uh, I've kept this whole front open like this when I'm parking in the city it just looks like that. It looks empty, except for the cords that are going to this little thing, right? A lot of the stuff I have is black so that you don't see it all going on in there. And right down in here is where I keep my water. So the water is low in the vehicle, right? And I can keep eight gallons right there, no problem. And I just use this photographic cloth to go over it and it just disappears. It, it looks like a shadow at night. I utilize, oh, let's take, look at this. So I do carry recovery gear and a few bits and bobs of fluid and stuff like that. So I put them in these padded containers that are black. So you don't see them when you look in. And this is probably um, power steering fluid. This is probably maybe some radiator fluid or brake fluid. It's probably brake fluid, power steering. And then I carry a $16 uh, serpentine belt just in case. I mean, 16 bucks, you know. I carry uh, this in case I have to saw something. You know, it's just a little samurai saw thing. Very aggressive. Comes in its own sheath. I got this Samurai one because um, it's much easier to use the way it's designed and it's ergonomic shape and stuff. It's easy to uh, use with one hand, right? It has very aggressive teeth. Um, down here is where I keep my tennis balls. Uh, I keep my recovery gear. So I've got the NOCO, uh, you know, lithium jumper, right? I can jump my car, I don't know, six, seven times before it runs out. And then I've got an axe for chopping wood and kindling. I've got, you know, this outstanding life straw uh, water purification that can give me thousands and thousands of gallons of purified water, no matter where I am. And then I have a manual winch. And then I have all the recovery straps that you'd ever want. I have kinetic rope. I have the three inch tree hugger straps and two other long straps and so I can get myself or get somebody else out of any kind of jam you can imagine. Um, I'm utilizing the back door, you know, water bottle holders for my, this is my oatmeal breakfast cereal in the morning. There's the jackery. And I don't carry a lot of tools for fixing the rig because I keep the rig in perfect condition. But I do carry underneath the, uh, the back seat, which you probably can't see, but underneath the driver's seat is a tool kit that is specifically made for Toyotas. It has pretty much everything you'd ever want. And it only has the components in it that work with the specific nuts and bolts that are on a Toyota. So there's no wasted, I'm not carrying stuff that I don't need. So the one thing you'll notice about this build is that everything is very low. It's below the windows. I can see out everywhere when I'm driving. And um, the, my center of gravity is super low. So when 
you see these big overlanding rigs and they've got the tents up there and the extra fuel up there and they've got a whole bunch of stuff hanging off the back and the metal bumpers you know front and rear and they've got the you know the winch and stuff up front they are just rocking and rolling and you know being aggressive on their tires and suspension and everything i don't have that problem this thing is light maneuverable um here's the last thing i'll show you this is kind of fun so i've got let's see you know the, the forerunner has this wonderful um i call this an awning because really um you know it creates its own awning that's why i don't have to have an awning on the car and plus you know my setup i don't actually set anything up when i come to a camp you know i'm just ready to go look at all this shade i just take my my comfy chair which i've got over there and i can just move it around the rig and put it in the comfy thing and if i need to i can just easily move the rig because there's nothing more that i have to set up when i roll into a a camp spot um, but what's neat about this light is you can press it and now i've got night vision the red light so each one can do that that's pretty cool you guys this is a solid state fire extinguisher i think it's from france you just pull the ends off you strike it and it will go for one minute and it'll put out four types of fire right it'll put out the four types of fire it won't damage your interior and it won't damage your uh, wiring and the cool thing is it has a it it's never has to be recharged or anything it's good forever so i have one there and i have one right back here right so i'm sleeping and something happens i can grab that and do it if i'm driving i can jump out of the car and use this so that's really cool the other thing that's kind of neat and i've tested this out on really rough roads. I have an iPhone, and this is the Apple charger that you use in your house, right? The wireless charger. And so all I did was just uh, hook it up to this RAM mount that comes from underneath the counter, and I, uh, I glued it to that thing. And that is hooked up to my Jackery battery in the back. So while I'm driving, my phone is charging and everything. And this is a fantastic charger because it, it this is the only one that charges it fully up. The, the, the other ones that you get for the car that say that they charge your phone up, it doesn't actually charge it up. You'll notice that um, I use my phone for my navigation because this is a 2016 Toyota 4Runner. And so it is the old style radio and the old, you know, there's like a disc somewhere under here um, with the nav in it. And so, you know, poo on that doesn't do anything. I just use that for XM radio and stuff. But all my nav goes through my phone. And when I'm off-roading, I use the Gaia um, GPS to, to uh, um, navigate with. And the phone never falls off this thing. It's incredible. And then, you know, you just pull it and it comes right off. It's great. And I have another one right there. So that at night, right, that's right above my head. That's right above my head. So at night, I just reach up and put the phone up there. When I wake up in the morning, the phone is all charged up. The other thing is that you see a lot of these cars, these off-road vehicles with um, all these mounts on the dash and everything. And I, I wanted my car to just look nice and comfy cozy, you know? Um, you know, I'm a rough, tough guy, but uh, I wanted, you know, I wanted it to be pleasurable when I was driving. So. I just put a little ball right here on the dash, which when this thing isn't there, you don't even notice the little ball. And it sort of adds to the stealthiness of the vehicle. And, um, and then I have a place to mount, you know, my GoPro if I want to do videos like that. So this is a vault. This is a vault in the vehicle. And um, I keep some fun stuff in there. I can keep a drone in there and my GoPro and I don't have to worry about that stuff getting stolen when I'm out and about in the city, you know, for the night. Right? If somebody were to smash and grab, they're not going to go after this because even you can see, let's see, does it say the company? Yeah, lock her down. There you go. Look at the videos about this thing. It's amazing. It's a, it's a real vault. 
bolted right into the uh, chassis of the car and the bolts go through from the inside so you can't even get to it. When I'm setting up at night, it's really simple. This is all I do in order to go to bed. So up in here, I put a high powered magnet behind this molding. And then I have this cloth where I sewed in a couple of magnets, right? So I've got the same thing going on that side. And I just hold it up like that. And it's shiny on this side, but on the other side, it's dull. So when you're looking in at night, it looks like there's nothing going on. And you look through the windows, right? And you're not looking up here at night. You're only looking at about this angle when you're looking in. So it looks like there's nothing going on. But when I'm inside, I can see out perfectly. It's the brilliance of a, the limo tent. You can see out. And then in the morning, right, I just slide out of my bed, close the back, and I just reach up here like this. And that's it. And I drive away. That's all my setup. That's all I got to do. So that's it, guys. I hope you liked it. It's a lot of fun. If you get a chance, get out there. See this country. It is amazing. Peace.